The Kern County Sheriff's Office received a report of a possible shooting. Officer down. We need medical aid to move up. A subject inside the residence began shooting at the deputies. Officer down. Cut the dagger on the patch. Uh, two of our deputies were struck. This morning, our community is reeling after an intense standoff ended in tragedy with a sheriff's deputy killed in the line of duty. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Maddie Jansen. And I'm Alex Fisher. Dozens of law enforcement formed an honor guard outside Kern Medical yesterday, solemnly saluting as a flag draped body was reverently placed in a hearse. The sheriff's office declined to immediately say whether one of their officers died in the standoff in Wasco, but the scene behind the trauma hospital said it all. The county's top law enforcement officers led a tearful procession from the hospital to the nearby coroner's office. Men in uniform openly wept as the body bag was carried down a corridor lined with officers and deputies holding a formal salute. Some of the officers wore the dress uniforms reserved for formal occasions like funerals. Other officers were dressed in camouflage as if they had just come from the firefight that ended a few minutes earlier. This morning, we are learning the deputy killed was Philip Campus, a member of KCSO SWAT team. The Kern County 999 Foundation sharing this picture of Deputy Campus, saying it's a tragic loss for the sheriff's office and entire community. All of this happening after that hours-long standoff in Wasco. It happened on Poplar Avenue and First Street, down the street from Thomas Jefferson Middle School. Heavily armored vehicles surrounded the home where a suspect barricaded himself and shot at deputies killing campus and wounding another. Our cameras were rolling during the heated exchange. Take a listen. Oh, yeah. And this morning we have 17 News team coverage. 17's Rafael Stroud is live at the Sheriff's Office with more on how officers have come under attack in recent years. And our Robert Price joins us to put some perspective on the dangers of this profession. But we begin with 17's Aton Wallace. He is live at the scene of the standoff with more information on the harrowing series of events that ended in tragedy. And Aton, I understand you've just learned some new information from family members there on scene. And Maddie, that's exactly right. We're here on First Street in Wasco, where it all unfolded. You can see this is the home where that suspect was inside. Now, I spoke with the godfather who identified himself as the godfather of people who lived in this home. He says three family members were killed by the suspect and that the suspect was killed by sheriff's deputies. That means yesterday's shooting, according to this godfather, a total of five people lost their lives, including a Kern County sheriff's deputy. You're listening to just a handful of several hundred rounds of gunfire that turned this Wasco neighborhood on Sunday into a war zone. At some points, SWAT officers could be seen running into positions and peering over rooftops. At other points, as the gunfire continued for minutes on end, officers could be seen retreating, taking cover behind this heavily armored vehicle. Neighbors on the block describing the chaos. It started shooting and everything, and then it's just going crazy, so he's got in the room away from all the shooting and just waited till it all come down. It all started just after 1 p.m. Deputies responding to a report of shots fired inside a home on First Street near Poplar Avenue. The information that we had was that we had victims of shootings in the residence. At this point, we believe that there are two people possibly down inside the residence. The sheriff's office says as soon as deputies got to the house, a gunman opened fire on them. No deputies were struck in the first round of gunfire, but two hours later, a SWAT attempted to rescue the victims. Officer down. Uh, we need medical aid to move up. In fact, two officers were shot. 17 News photojournalist Juan Corona capturing video as one of the officers was helped into a hall ambulance. The other was airlifted to Kern Medical. One of the wounded deputies, Philip Campus, later died at the hospital. As for the gunman, more than three hours after the shooting and five hours into the standoff. The suspect was struck. The suspect is currently being treated by medical aid and I believe will be transported to a local hospital. I'm feeling kind of shaken, but it'll go away. 
Hopefully it all goes back to normal. Back to normal, not possible for the fallen deputy's family. Mourners already paying their respects, placing flowers and lighting candles outside the Wasco KCSO substation. A visual reminder that one Kern County family and the greater law enforcement family now mourning one of their own. Well, now that the sun is up, we want to give you an idea of what the scene looks like this morning. This is the home where you can see a Bearcat armored vehicle with SWAT actually went in. Look at the big hole in the home's wall right there. And then as I step in the frame, you can see actually where the Bearcat went up onto the sidewalk here. Notice the entire fence is gone, and you can totally see the tracks of the Bearcat. And by the way, right near the door there, you can also see bullet holes near the wall there in the door area. So definitely remnants of what was a chaotic scene here in Wasco. And again, I just spoke with the godfather of people who lived here at this home. He says three of his relatives were killed here. He also says the suspect died and a sheriff's deputy died. That would make five total who died here after all that unfolded yesterday. We're live in Wasco, Aton Wallace, 17 News. Aton, thank you. And as mentioned, details surrounding this case are still unfolding this morning, and we expect an update later from sheriff's officials. For the latest, make sure to download our 17 News app for breaking alerts that can be sent directly to your phone. Meantime, Wasco Mayor Alex Garcia released a statement last night paying tribute to the fallen deputy. It reads in part, I pray that God surrounds these families with his love and gives them the strength to make it through this devastating time. I would also like to take time to thank all of our brothers and sisters in law enforcement and first responder communities who valiantly put their lives on the line every day to protect our residents. I cannot thank you enough for the work you do. And Kern County's top law enforcement official also spoke out last night. District Attorney Cynthia Zimmer took to Twitter writing, Our deepest condolences to family, friends, and fellow deputies of the Kern County De Deputy Sheriff who was killed in the line of duty today. We also pray for a speedy recovery for the second deputy wounded. A tremendous tragedy and loss for Kern County Sheriff's Office and our community. Our hearts are broken. Just a year and a half ago, Deputy Philip Campus was named Deputy of the Month. He spoke about receiving the award from the Kern Law Enforcement Association. I really appreciate the Kern Law Enforcement Association for recognizing me with this award, uh, the Deputy of the Month Award. Uh, it truly means a lot. That was Deputy Campus in December 2019. In addition to being part of SWAT, KLEA says that Deputy Campus was a part of the Honor Guard and a former Marine. Today, local law enforcement are reeling from the killing of one of their own, a reality that police and sheriff's officials have not encountered in more than six years. The last officer killed in the line of duty in Kern County was Bakersfield Police Officer David Nelson. You may remember back in June of 2015 when Nelson was involved in a pursuit after stopping an unlicensed car. During the chase, Nelson's car slid off the roadway and hit a utility pole on Mount Vernon Avenue. He died in that crash. He is survived by his parents, Larry and Mary Nelson, and his brothers, Eric and Michael. Nelson was just 26 at the time of his death. Two years later, on August 9, 2017, 47-year-old BPD Sergeant Dennis Moore died after suffering a heart attack while getting ready for work. His family said years of stressful police work finally took its toll. Moore had worked for BPD since 1997 and previously worked at the Arvin Police Department. He is survived by Gina Moore, his wife of 23 years, and three adult children. While it has been years since we've seen a local peace officer killed in the line of duty, last night's deadly incident is the latest snapshot of a dangerous era for law enforcement. 17's Raphael Stroud joins us now with more. Raph. And Maddie, this is something that we've heard the sheriff talk about before on this very program. It was just last year he was telling us it felt like deputies were encountering more violent suspects and even more of them over time. And now it has had a deadly consequence. He's been saying it for years, and just over eight months ago, Sheriff Donnie Youngblood said it here. Suspects are getting more aggressive. Uh, you know, what's concerning to me is we've had this rash of uh, uh, people that are running at uh, police officers at deputies. Uh, th this is something different that um, uh, is pretty frightening. Now the Kern County Sheriff's Office is mourning one of their own with a deputy killed in a blistering gunfight during a hostage situation in Wasco. Over the last several months... Oh, shit. Shots fired. 
fired. Shots fired. Kern County officers have found themselves in more and more shootouts or other attacks. Get inside. The brush is with death caught on camera. Usually these killer be killed showdowns end with the suspects slain, sometimes with officers wounded. All that changing with last night's deadly standoff. And just months earlier, the death of a BPD canine. The state justice department says attacks on officers jumped in 2020. In California alone, over 11,000 assaults were reported. And the violence against law enforcement is being seen nationwide, with the FBI reporting 37 officers killed in the first six months of the year, a 32% jump. But by mid-July, the FBI says that number has risen to 40. To compare, 46 officers were killed in all of 2020 during felonies. This year, already looking to be worse, with Kern County marking end of watch for one of our own. And KCSO has suffered um, on-duty accidents and crashes over the years that have caused uh, other deputies' deaths. But in terms of shootings, this would be their uh, first one since 1989, according to their memorial page. In Bakersfield, I'm Rafael Stroud, 17 News. 611 is your time now and still to come this morning. Continuing coverage on last night's shooting in Wasco as the county awaits an, for an update from sheriff's officials. Everything we know so far about this investigation, plus 17's Robert Price joins us with more on the perils of the law enforcement profession. Welcome back. Your time now is 614 on this Tuesday morning, and we're taking a look at your forecast. And uh, if you were up in the mountain areas today, you may have noticed a little earthquake. Yeah, did you feel it? Maddie said she felt a little jolt uh, out of Tehachapi right around 121 this morning, and it was a 3.0 magnitude located six miles northwest of Tehachapi, so between Keene and Tehachapi, and just north of the 58. So yeah, just a small one, but some folks might have felt it. I want to show you our beautiful sunrise. Take a look at this uh, out near Rosedale right now. And it's just a beautiful morning. We're seeing the same out of downtown Bakersfield at this time as the sun comes up over the hill. 81 degrees with some clouds and east-northeast wind at 8 miles per hour. And temperatures running into the 70s to lower 80s for the valley. We've got 67 in Fraser Park to Hatchby at 70 and Lake Isabella right now at 79. Yesterday, our high 102. Still above the normal of 99. The record today, 117. That was set back in 1931, and I can promise you we won't get close to that. In fact, I think yesterday was the end of heat wave number five with today's temperatures below 100. As we take a look at the skies, this will be something that we'll be talking about throughout the day. We have plenty of clouds, and we're going to be watching for that monsoonal moisture. If you remember the end of last week, we talked about that coming our direction. And overnight, we saw numerous thunderstorms out of the Las Vegas area, and you can see a lot of this moisture is to the south of us right now. But we expect Expected to kind of drift more north as we go throughout the day. So that puts the Kern County mountain and desert areas under the gun for thunderstorm activity. And we can't rule out some of those drifting over the mountains and impacting Kern County and the Bakersfield area. But right now, our thunderstorm forecast model does keep it into parts of the uh, Kern River Valley to Hatchby and out in the desert and then areas to the east of that. So it could be a very active day. And the good news is all the models indicating if we do see these thunderstorms, there is enough moisture moisture with these that it wouldn't be a dry lightning incident. If we see the thunderstorms, we may get some good rain. We'll probably get some good uh, wind flow out of this as well because thunderstorms overnight to the east had some strong winds with them. So this is our future cast model as we head into this afternoon and the evening. And then uh, tomorrow we should be able to clear things out after midnight. We're expecting a sunny day. Here's a look at today's temperatures. 84 in Tahoe, 99 in Fresno, 70s into LA and San Diego and Vegas. Look at that below 100 at 91. Part of that is the thunderstorms uh, that they are seeing this morning and expected throughout the day. As we take a look at the air quality, moderate today, AQI at 74 for the valley, putting a 30% chance of a shower or a thunderstorm in there for you. 93 in Bakersfield, Delano 94, 95 in Buttwillow. We'll bump that up a little bit for the mountain areas, uh, under a 60% chance of seeing the thunderstorms develop. We're looking at 77 in Fraser Park, 80 in Tehachapi, lower 90s for the Kern River Valley. 
And then for the desert, there's also a pretty good chance of those showers and thunderstorms. 85 in Mojave and Ridgecrest. That's a big cool down from what you've been at right around 105, 106 today, 91. Here's your extended forecast. After today, things quiet down again. For the Valley, we'll be right near 100 tomorrow, 103 by Friday, overnight into the 70s. As we take a look at the mountain forecast, upper 80s tomorrow, there is a slight chance of maybe some thunderstorms coming back to the area by Friday and Saturday, uh, overnight in the 60s. And then for the Kern River Valley, tomorrow, sunny and 97, near 100 as we round out the work week. And there is a slight chance of more activity into the Kern River Valley Friday and Saturday. But for all areas of Kern County, today is really our main focus with seeing these storms develop throughout the afternoon. But just an absolutely gorgeous sunrise this yeah, morning. Yeah, beautiful wow. sunrise out there, and uh, so get out and enjoy it. It's going to be a little bit humid today as well, especially as we start to heat up in the afternoon. I know when we were taking a look at the, the sky cameras just a few minutes ago, you could definitely see a difference in uh, what it looks like outside when, you know, we're typically used to just seeing nothing, right. no clouds, hey, just at sun. At least it's not Tokyo where we're in the 90s and 70% yeah. humid. Oh. That's so, true. Yeah. Oh, that's hot. That's rough. Right, Kev. Thanks so much. Well, just a few weeks ago, Kern's Generosity sent a local soccer team to the national championships. Now another young team secured a spot in the world stage, but they need your help getting there. That story next. Welcome back here at 621. Kids at the Bakersfield Homeless Center got their Christmas presents early with the help of the Bakersfield Police Department. The annual Christmas in July event was held this weekend. Organizers say it's a special day to make kids feel loved and treasured. They boogied to some beats, got soaked in the water, and jumped around in a bounce house and apparently took a ride on a train. More than 53 kids were given presents funded by the police department. BPD says it raised more than $4,000 to give kids this special day. Looks like they had a great time. One local woman is making history as the first African-American woman in Bakersfield to open up her own vocational school. Cher Cole opened Kern Valley Medical College exactly a year ago. But she couldn't celebrate with the grand opening because of the pandemic. This weekend, Cole was able to celebrate the one-year anniversary with a grand opening. It's a celebration that um, someone of color was able to open up their own school. And it's not, you know, even though I'm a woman of color, the school is not based on color. But it's an opportunity for us to share and celebrate something that is, um, that's rare. Kern Valley Medical College is off Commercial Way in Bakersfield, offering certificates in professions like phlebotomy and EMT. Cole says opening the school has been a dream in the making for some time. And she hopes, although she is the first, she won't be the last. A local baseball team secured a spot in the Babe Ruth World Series, but they need your help to get there. The Bakersfield Waves are getting creative to raise money in order to travel to Alabama to compete for the world title, and the community's pitching in. The team held a barbecue fundraiser Saturday to help meet their goal of $10,000. The team's coach says it's amazing to see the community's support. The team also set up a GoFundMe account to help with expenses. For a link to donate, go to our website, kget.com, and click on the hot link icon. 623 is your time now, and the 2020 Summer Olympics continues in Tokyo with plenty of excitement so far. How today's competitions lining up when we come back. Welcome back here at 626. The 2020 Summer Olympics continue in Tokyo. Plenty of excitement so far. Team USA got off to a flying start over the weekend. But how are things going today? NBC's Kurt Gregory has the latest from Japan. Fierce competition in the pool. The U.S. men flex their muscles in the 4x100 freestyle relay. Caleb Dressel charges out to a lead. Zach Apple brings home the gold. I mean, we're never gonna, we're never gonna doubt ourselves. I mean, that's how Team USA works. A golden showdown in the pool. Katie Ledecky comes up just short against Australia's Arion Titmus in the women's 400 freestyle. Ledecky takes silver. Actually, I wanted to give it all I had. I fought tooth and nail and uh, just gave it my all, so I can't be disappointed with that. Simone Biles and her U.S. teammates sit second after qualifying. The greatest gymnast ever needs to overcome miscues on the floor and vault. It's the most nerve-wracking, and I just feel like I put a lot of pressure on myself. I mean, today still wasn't the best. A reality check in men's basketball. Team USA beaten by France in its opener. A golden moment for USA fencing. Lee Kiefer, the first American ever to win gold in foil. And Florida teenager Anastasia Zolotich becomes the first American woman to win Olympic gold in Taekwondo. 
She's the featherweight champion. History emphasizes Kurt Gregory, NBC News. This is what we've been waiting for, working for, dreaming. Your time is 627. Still ahead in our next half hour on Sunrise, searching for answers. For the first time in nearly six years, local law enforcement is mourning the loss of one of their own. More on the shootout that left a sheriff's deputy dead when we come back. Sheriff's Office received a report of a possible shooting. Officer down. Any medical aid to move up? A subject inside the residence began shooting at the deputies. Officer down. Cut the down the patch. Uh, two of our deputies were struck. And welcome back here on this Monday. It is 530. I'm Maddie Jansen. And I'm Alex Fisher. We continue our coverage on the death of a Kern County Sheriff's deputy yesterday killed in the line of duty. During an hours long standoff in Wasco yesterday, we are learning this morning that Deputy Philip Campus was shot and killed. Dozens of law enforcement formed an honor guard outside Kern Medical yesterday as the county's top law enforcement officers led a tearful procession from the hospital to the nearby coroner's office. Deputy Campus was part of SWAT and honor guard. He was also a former Marine, according to Kern Law Enforcement Association. 17 Dayton Wallace is live this morning in Wasco where the shooting took place. He's been out there all morning long and he's heard some new updates for us this morning. Aton? Yes, that's right, Alex. Definitely new updates this morning. More than 17 hours after this standoff first began, this is what's left here of the scene. In fact, Kern County Sheriff's Department no longer here, although the investigation just starting now into this standoff that left five killed and leaving the Kern County Sheriff's Department mourning one of its own. You're listening to just a handful, a handful of several hundred rounds of gunfire that turned this Wasco neighborhood on Sunday into a scene out of a war zone. It all started just after 1 p.m. Deputies responding to a report of shots fired inside a home on 1st Street near Poplar Avenue with, po with uh, people shot inside. And we have confirmed that today. Now, the sheriff's office says as soon as deputies responded to the house, a gunman opened fire on them. Now, no deputies were struck in the first round of gunfire, but two hours later, after SWAT was called in, two deputies were shot. Both were taken to the hospital where Deputy Philip Campus died of his injuries. KCSO says the other deputy suffered moderate wounds. We have not yet heard as to how that deputy is doing this morning. Now, I just spoke with the godfather of three people who live in the house where I'm standing right now. He says they were killed. He said he's devastated that they've been taken away from the family. My God, so my sister-in-law, mother, two nephews, just like that in the blink of an eye whole family right now and look everybody say luckily and thank god he did not hit my the other two little childs in there they had some guardian angels and everything right next to them but it still didn't work for the rest of our family as for this as for the suspect, KCSO says more than six hours after the first shots rang out, the suspect and KCSO exchanged more gunfire, and the suspect was hit. Chavez tells me the suspect later died. People have begun to pay their respects in front of the Wasco KCSO substation to bring flowers and candles, but this is the home where the standoff all happened. You can see now that the sun is up, remnants and really evidence of what took place here. A bear cat uh, came right in. You can see the prints here of the bear cat coming right up to the wall there. And in the wall, a big hole in the wall of this home. The bear cat clearly trying to get in, by the way, near the door. You can also see bullet holes in the door. So, and one more thing is here as you look at the fence, the fence is completely torn away here. The bear cat completely taking everything away that, that, that was here on this on this lawn. Now, Kern County Sheriff Donna Youngblood is expected to give a press conference later today, and of course, we will bring that to you with all the information that we have learned. Of course, you can keep up to date on TV17 right here on our app, social media, and KGT.com. We are live in Wasco, Aton Wallace, 17 News. All right, thank you, Aton. And last night's deadly shooting was not the only standoff KCSO responded to this weekend, the first with a very different ending. 
On Saturday night, sheriff's deputies arrived at a home on Meadow Ridge Avenue near Deep Creek Drive after reports of a reckless motorcycle driving nearby. The motorcyclist led officers on a pursuit before getting off the motorcycle and running into the home. CHP on scene told 17 News the suspect ran in and out of the house, even threatening law enforcement. Sheriff's deputies used pepper balls to subdue the man before entering the home. That man was eventually taken into custody. He faces charges of evading officers and making threats. The violence of Sunday's Wasco hostage standoff reminds us once again of the daily potential for tragedy inherent in the job of a sheriff's deputy. Joining us in studio this morning with more on this is 17th Robert Price. Maddie, it's becoming something of a cliche when it comes to law enforcement officers and the way they make their living. You've heard the line, they just want to go home to their families too. Of course they want to go home to their families and even on their bad days like you and me, they do. But not on the worst of their worst days. Their worst days remind the rest of us of what makes police officers and sheriff's deputies different from almost everyone else. When a bad guy with a gun, or a confused guy with a gun, an impaired guy, whatever, starts taking out his frustrations, someone invariably gets hurt. And sometimes it's a good guy with a gun. A good guy like Kern County Sheriff's Deputy Phyllis, Philip Campus, who went down Sunday afternoon in Wasco answering that call. A man holed up in a house on 1st Street had taken hostages and the Kern County Sheriff's Department, Wasco's contracted police agency, took up positions. Resolved the standoff peacefully if possible, but in any case, resolved the standoff. They did, at a cost, a very high cost. We have only a few details. We expect to get more from Sheriff Donnie Youngblood later this morning, but we know this month, this much, at least one sheriff's deputy didn't go home to his family last night. These are tough times to be in law enforcement, tougher times than many of us can remember. Political strife and ongoing civil rights debate the past 16 months in particular have been difficult, including for cops. But this is one aspect of law enforcement work that has never diminished as a threat. From Deputy Will Tibbet, killed by gunfire in the line of duty on these streets 108 years ago, to Deputy Rick McHale, killed 32 years ago, to Deputy Philip Campus, killed Sunday. The potential for violence, deadly violence, has always been there. The rest of us might not think much about it, but the families of law enforcement officers, they think about it a lot. And on this sobering morning, we're all reminded why. In studio, Robert Price, 17 News. All right, Robert, thanks so much for that. We're going to take a break from this breaking news and uh, talk about our forecast because that's going to be an interesting one today, right, Kev? Yeah, it is definitely going to be something we're going to be watching as we go throughout today. We talked about it last Friday, how that monsoonal moisture was going to get a little bit closer to us. And you can see here on satellite and radar, there looks like maybe a shower starting to develop just south of the Mojave area, making its way uh, more to the west near Tehachapi. So it's really the uh, Kern County Mountain and desert areas that we're going to be watching carefully today. But it can't rule out some of this making its way over the range and impacting Bakersfield and surrounding areas. Here's a look outside right now. Definitely going to see some clouds today. Humidity value will be up as well. So along with the heat, we'll also be looking at some humid conditions. 81 degrees right now, 23% on the humidity with an east northeast wind at 8. There is some good news here, and we will keep it below 100 today. As you can see here in the forecast, temperatures will be right near 94 and some cloud cover moving on in throughout the day. Now for Tehachapi, you can see definitely some clouds. We watch watching the skies for any of that thunderstorm development. We've got a temperature right now at 70, humidity up at 35%, and you can see throughout the day temperatures are expected into the 70s, and we're also looking, yes, at possibly some showers and some thunderstorms. So definitely something we'll be watching as we go throughout the day. Back to you. All right, Kev, thanks so much. Still to come this morning on 17 News at Sunrise, an astonishing rescue caught on camera after a woman and baby were pinned under an out-of-control car. The startling footage and more on that frantic effort to save the innocent bystanders next.